The Sleeping Beauty. Once upon a time, there lived a king and a queen. They lived in a great castle, and they were rich beyond compare. Yet their lives were filled with sadness. For the one thing they wanted, more than anything else in the world, was to have a child. One day, the queen found herself down by the river. All I want is a child, she cried. Her eyes filled with tears. Oh, why can't I have my own child? Suddenly, up popped a frog, onto a lily pad right in front of her. Dry your tears, my lady. He croaked, "For you can and you will. Yes, in less than a year, you shall have your very own little daughter." And with that, he was gone under the water, away. The queen could hardly believe the news. In fact. She was so happy that she ran, and she skipped all the way back to the castle, waving her arms around, and yelling at the top of her voice, "Husband, husband, we are going to have a baby!" Well, if the queen was delighted, the king was delirious. He hugged her and kissed her. He laughed and he cried. And sure enough, within a year, a fine baby girl was born. The king was so full of pride, and so full of joy, that he ordered a great feast. He invited his sisters and brothers, his friends and relations, and anyone else he could think of. And just to make sure that they did not put a curse on his pretty little baby, he invited the twelve wise women, who were in fact fairies. Unfortunately, there were actually thirteen of them, but the king only had twelve golden plates, and he did not want the wise women to be arguing amongst themselves. There at the feast, so he only invited twelve, which meant that one of them had to be left at home. Well, it was a good idea inviting the twelve wise women, for they ate and they drank and they had a well of a time. And when the feasting was over, they offered their gifts to the little princess, and very special gifts they were. For one gave the princess wit, the second gave her beauty, the third gave her grace, and the fourth gave her courage. And so they carried on, one after another. Offering her everything you could wish for and more, but maybe it was not such a good idea after all, for just after the eleventh had spoken, in strode the thirteenth, the one who had been left at home, with her face in a deep scowl. In her fifteenth year, she hissed. Pointing her long bony finger at the pretty little baby, she will prick herself with the spindle and fall down dead. And with that, she turned and stomped out of the room. Everyone shuddered at this terrible curse, but up spoke the twelfth wise woman, the one who had not yet given her gift. Take heart. Your Majesty," she said, "I cannot undo the curse of my sister, but I will do everything in my power to soften it. It will not be a death, therefore, but a deep sleep of a hundred years into which your beloved princess will fall. 
the king, who hoped against hope that he could prevent the curse from taking effect, even in its milder form, sent out orders that every spindle in the kingdom should be destroyed. Burn your spindles! Burn your spindles! By royal decree, cried his messengers, all over the land. And everyone did, for word had spread of the wise woman's curse, and no one wanted it to be their spindle that the poor little princess pricked her finger on. So it came about in time that the little girl grew up, beautiful, modest, good-natured, and wise, so that anyone who met her was born to love her. But fifteenth years is a long time, and though the curse never faded, the memory of it did. One day, soon after the beautiful princess had reached her fifteenth year, the king and queen, and all of their courtiers went out riding, leaving her alone in the castle. She wandered all over. Poking around in cupboards and cellars, until at last she came to an old tower she had never noticed before. Up she climbed up the narrow winding staircase until she reached a door at the top. There was a rusty key in the lock, and when she turned it, the door creaked open. And there, in the little room, sat an old, old woman with a spindle, spinning flax to make into linen. Good day to you, old woman," said the princess. "What is it you are doing?" For. Of course, she had never seen such a thing in her life. I am spinning, my pretty one," answered the old woman. "How nice it looks!" cried the princess. "Can I have a go?" And she leaned forward to take a closer look at how it was done. What sort of thing is this bobbing about? She asked, touching the spindle. But as soon as she did, the curse of the thirteenth wise woman took effect. With a gasp of pain, the princess pricked her finger, and a drop of royal blood dripped to the floor. I'm so tired. She moaned, and she staggered over to the old woman's bed and fell there, and then into the deepest sleep that anyone has ever slept in the whole history of the world. And it did not just happen to her, but to every living thing in the castle, the king and queen, and all of their courtiers. Only just returned from their ride, each fell into the deepest sleep too. So did the horses in the yard, and the dogs in their shed, the pigeons on the roof, and the flies up on the wall. Even fire blazing in the hearth died away and slept. The meat stopped sizzling. The cook. Held off from tugging on the kitchen boy's hair, for she had just been given him a good talking to for being fresh, and the maid dropped the chicken whose neck she was about to wring, and fell asleep too. Not a leaf stirred, not a bird sang, not a whistle, not a laugh, not a yawn. And they did not just sleep for a night, 
and they did not just sleep for a year. No, the curse was for a hundred years, longer than most lifetimes. All around the castle grew a hedge of briars and brambles and thorns, all tangled together so that neither man nor beast could get through. Higher and higher they grew, these thorns, until in time there was nothing to be seen of the castle, not even the flag up on the roof. You would not have any idea there had ever been such a thing, except that the story of the Sleeping Beauty went all around the country, passed down to people's children and their children's children, changing with every telling, until no one was sure anymore where exactly it had happened how it had happened to, or even whether it had really happened at all. From time to time, though, King's sons would arrive in the forest, determined to break their way through the wall of thorns, to find out if there was any truth in the tale. Sadly, none of them succeeded. Most of them were in the wrong place altogether, and they worn themselves out hacking and chopping, burning and cutting and never finding so much as a wall. And the ones who were fortunate enough to guess the right spot were not in fact lucky at all, for the evil thorns grabbed them like claws and hold on tightly until each and every one of the poor brave princes died a cruel and horrible death. After many long years, another king's son from a far distant land found himself in the forest, purely by chance, and came upon an old man gathering wood. Have you ever heard of the hidden castle? The old man asked him. I have not, said the king's son. Have you ever heard of the sleeping beauty who had to stay asleep for a hundred years? I have not, replied the king's son. And where is this castle and where is this girl? Right there behind you, the old man pointed right in the middle of the gigantic thorn hedge. Also, my old father once told me, but don't try and go in, young man. You've never come out alive. Well, the prince was a mighty adventurer, and if he was warned that something was dangerous, then he was certain to try it. So, as soon as he heard the old man's words, he drawn out his sword and started to hack at the bushes. But what neither of them knew was that, at that very moment, the hundred years were up. The thorns turned, all of a sudden, into soft and beautiful flowers, which parted as soon as the brave prince approached letting him pass through unhurt, and then gently closed behind him. He came into a great forecourt, where the sight that met his eyes were almost enough to freeze his blood, for the appearance of death was all around him. There were men and women, horses and dogs, all lying or standing, perfectly still, but when the prince looked more closely, he discovered that every one of them was breathing, every one of them was asleep. In the castle yard, the horses and hounds still snored, and the pigeons on the roof sat with their heads tucked under their wings. 
and when the king's son entered the house, the flies were asleep upon the wall. The cook was still holding the kitchen boy's hair, and the chicken lay on the floor where the maid had dropped it. He went further in, and in the great hall he saw the whole of the court asleep. And up by the throne lay the king, and the queen. Even farther in he ventured, while all around him was silence, until at last he came to the mysterious tower. Climbing up the narrow winding staircase, he opened the door into the little room, where the princess was sleeping. There she lay, so lovely that he could not turn his eyes away. So captivated was he by her frozen beauty that he stooped down and stole a kiss. And as soon as he did, she opened her eyes and smiled up at him. At that very same moment, the king awoke. The queen awoke, and the courtiers opened their eyes wide, and stared at one another amazed. The horses in the courtyard stood up, and shook themselves. The hounds jumped up, wagging their tails. The pigeons on the roof flew off. The flies crept over the wall. The fire in the kitchen sparked into flame. The meat began cooking. The chicken gave a mighty squawk and ran around the room, and the cook gave the kitchen boy such a yank on his hair that he hollered, "Will you marry me?" asked the king's son on bent knee, for he knew. Just by looking at the lovely princess, that he could not live without her, and the Sleeping Beauty said that she would. The celebrations went on for a whole week, and they lived happily there in the castle in the forest to the end of their days. Thank you for listening, boys and girls. This is from. Your story fairies. Have a good night, sweet dreams. <laughs>